Hello everybody, welcome back. Okay, so the tournament uh, goes is finished. These are the final standings. I finished third on tiebreak. Again, equal first. So it's become a recurring theme. Keith Falk always seems to be the centre of it as well. Uh, that I I get level points. It's happened to me the last three tournaments. Uh, Northumbria Blitz Qualifier. Or Northeast uh, Blitz Qualifier. I finished third on tiebreak. Uh, with three players getting 12 and a half. The Guernsey Blitz, I finished third on tie break. Uh, with three players getting six, uh, seven out of, um, sorry, eight out of nine, which is a big score, right? And this tournament, I finished third on tie break. So I've been a bit, little bit unlucky, I think, because uh, in all three tournaments, I've scored over 80%. It's normally quite happy with a game points here, which is good. A Harry, did he, how many points did he gain? Uh, it's a slight game, it's a slight game. Um, I gain about two points. That's not bad. I think Keith gained about seven. Uh, so I'll be up to twenty four forty five. It's hard to gain, but obviously I, you know, if I wanted to win it outright, uh, take the risk out of the equation. Obviously, I had to have adopt a more aggressive approach in the games I played. But I was I was pleased the fact that I finished um, the round the tournament with a win. I played against Kevin Third. I'll show you this game. Uh, I was black, so flip the board. I'll show you from my perspective. Yeah, so his memory is better than mine. I spoke to Kevin. Kevin's a nice guy, actually. He's from my kind of neck of the woods. He's from kind of southeast London kind of area, I think. Or well, he was talking about... Uh, no, he's from like Surrey, actually. So I played for Coulston back in the day, and we played a match against Red Hill. He was telling me about this. I didn't remember this game at all. And apparently we had the same variation. I played this as black. So clearly my life has not progressed much in the last 20 odd years. So this is going back to the 1990s, right? Before Harry Greave won the tournament, it was even born. Now, I think in that game, I probably would have gone Bishop E7 because that was like the fashion at the time. I went A5, which is the fashion now, right? Um... So e3 is normal. I was actually expecting him to go knight f3 here, which I thought was uh, possible. Or so at some point, go, I think actually knight f3 here is also possible. But he went a3, and then he played e3, which is normal. Yeah, and I thought the main move here was d4. I'm not sure what the what does the theory say. You're supposed to take, take, take. And now the bishop b6 is the top move. Now, I had this the other day, and I was a little bit concerned that in some lines, you know, given that you're probably going to castle king side as black, they very quickly uh, bring the knight to f3 and bishop d3. You might have a few issues. But I think knight f3, for example, you probably delay castling. Uh, Ding Liren's actually won a game from here. He went bishop g5, f6, bishop back to e3. Castles, yeah. So White's got his weak pawn on d5. It does have attacking chances on the king's side. Bishop d3, for example. Yeah. So this is all some kind of theory, but uh, that didn't happen. Uh, Kevin played a novelty. Apparently, this has never been played before. Normal kind of looking move, right? I took when d6. I was expecting him to play a normal move like knight f3. He fought for a while. Played b3. Not terrible. I played here. And, yeah, I don't want to use excuses, but after he went knight f3, I just, I mean, I played a bad move here. And I think it was po po possibly reflected by the fact that A, I was nervous. B, it was a morning game. Um, also, a tricky position to handle, because uh, White has some attacking ideas of going h4. And I possibly overestimated them in the game. Now, there's several ways to play this. Uh, for example, you could even play the move h6, which preempts any kind of attack like this. h4 and g 5 ideas. Uh, but actually, the computer then points out you can take on e5. Crazy move, right? I think I did actually briefly look at... Uh, not not after h6, but I briefly looked at ideas and knight takes e5. The idea is if you take with a pawn, c 5 hanging. If you take with a knight, then you regain the piece with d4. It's probably okay for y, right? Um, so, 
yeah, I think here actually there's a lot of issues with this c5 bishop being on pre. So the, the correct move, obviously in at some point back would like to go d5 and then have a powerful center. Correct move is something like bishop b6, which I didn't really consider in the game. I played my move quite quickly. Should have spent longer here. I think I was partly tired. I think, yeah, when, when you played every game in the afternoon and then suddenly you switch to the uh, morning, it's quite tricky. Now, the idea behind this move is slightly subtle. Uh, the idea, I'm not sure why it wants to go d4 because then you end up with a nice late pawn. So the point is now that if he plays a movie played in the game, you then run into d5 with tempo. That's very good for black. Um, so bishop b6, subtle move, and you've got ideas of bringing the bishop to e6, maybe putting a rook on c8. Just gets the bishop out of the firing line, instead of which I played queen e7, terrible move. <coughs> well, not terrible, but just not the best move. He went bishop c4, and this is where I played another slightly suspect move. So I think to play at high level, you need to handle these kind of situations very well, right? You know, it's like borderline. Do you get the initiative? Do you play well enough over the next few moves to kind of beat off the attack, get into the game? Or do you allow white to start dominating? Unfortunately, that's what happened. I allowed him to start dominating. I was maybe a little bit too concerned about moves like h4 here. The computer doesn't like this. It doesn't think this is a very good idea. Forget what you play, but what what do you what does it say here? Yeah, I think you, for example, you can just do this and now uh, f6. And uh, it's not that great for for white. Still, you know, over the board, you're kind of concerned, and I I realised uh, Kevin had a lot of experience. In these kind of English openings, uh, you know, there's lots of attacking ideas that White has. Uh, but h4 wasn't played. He went bishop c4, which is an excellent move. And then the main idea is if I go e4, he goes queen c3. And that's a very powerful idea because now I no longer have f6. I have, I think the only move to avoid losing a lot of material is queen f6. A very bad idea to double the pawns like that. So I didn't like that at all. So I play the move I was reluctant to play. I kind of underestimated bishop c4. I think if I'd have considered his replies, I was kind of like just playing automatically. Queen e7, idea of going e4. If I'd have considered his reply bishop c4, I would have thought a bit more about queen e7. Again, I made another mistake. I should have just gone rook d8. That was a move I considered. Uh, if he goes h4, now I go d5, and black is doing very well. That was the first move. I wasn't really playing on instinct. I think I was just tired and it was just... Started playing bad, bad moves, you know, routinely, but not instinctively. I was rejecting my instinct for the wrong reasons. It was all a bit of a disaster. Is he six bad move? Uh, he took, well, he doesn't have to take. He's probably got other options, but he took. Took with a pawn. Didn't like queen takes. So I thought he had an IG5. Yeah, and he castled here, and I don't think there's any danger that white uh, black will go rook f3 because after gf3 there's always like queen e4 king h1 uh, so i went back bishop actually that was also a mistake it should be six i should have gone rook f actually rook f5 was my first gut feeling uh with the idea of bringing the other rook to f8 so it's a bad sign when you're not playing moves that you, you, you you're rejecting moves that you instinctively thought about playing for the wrong reasons um, I'm not even sure why I even rejected that move. I just thought that this is kind of like a bluff, right? And never really threatening to take. So when bishop b6 was just kind of like really, uh, yeah, just playing automatically and badly. Some vague idea of going rook c8, but so what? He's just going to move the queen, right? He went, oh yeah, this is actually an important moment where he could have taken a big advantage. I didn't see this move in the game, but... The computer points out that white can go b4 here. Very powerful idea. Uh, just grab some squares. And sometimes, you know, you're just threatening. But you're just gaining space. Very important space. Queen can now come to b3. Maybe b5 is also an idea. Uh, and if you take, this is going to end very badly, I think. Just queen b3. Uh, black loses material because if here, then d4. And if knight d5, then e4. 
very subtle play around about here. I mean, it looks innocuous, looks like there's not much going on, but B4 would have been a very nice idea. Instead uh, of that, he didn't play the best move, but he still played a reasonable move. He went rook here, and I was thinking, this is really not the situation I wanted at the start of the game. I wanted a very complex position uh, where I've got chances at playing, but it looks like a very simple position to play for white. And I didn't like my chances of winning the game, and I thought, yeah, this is depressing. You know, this is not what I wanted at all. Um, so I went h6. Uh, basically, I don't know. I, you know, not a great move, but I didn't see anything better. I actually wondered if he could even just come back and exploit this h6 move. And uh, some ideas of going knight h4 to g6. It's a very sharp position. It can, you know, black's position can start to creak. Uh, but he went d4, which is still in line with, I think it was a good move, in line with his plan. Um, probably should not have gone e5 here. That was actually also a mistake. Because I'm giving him squares like d5. But I didn't really see anything better. I just felt like I've got to do something, right? Uh, maybe this moves like rook f5 here. But they look very vague. I mean, I don't really see why black can ever be better. So I went here. I didn't, yeah, it was not a very good move. And uh, he went here. Already he's clearly better. Uh, this is really like my nightmare scenario. Went queen d5. Yeah, this is like where white's slightly back with no risk. And a game where I need to win with black, right? I went king f7. Yeah, and this is probably the key moment of the game. And I think if he found the right plan here, I think he quite possibly would have won the game. Never mind, got a result, you know. But he didn't play the best move here. Um, I'll tell you the move he played. He went king f7. King f1, sorry. Um, with the idea of bringing the king to centre, very normal in the, in the end game, right? Now, I was actually considering moves like rook b5 uh, but then rook d7 happens and black should be okay because if here you could even give up this board you can go rook a8 but you can go I was like rook a8 we were looking at lines like f4 in a post-mortem and you know it's like a bobby fisher type end game where you're trying to open up that bishop you've got a nice position you know nice slight edge i think against good positional player like an ami gart see i'd struggle here um but I think you can actually go d5, which is less clear. And if he takes, you can go rook a8. I think I vaguely saw variations like this in the game. And a b4 he can play, but that's kind of a little bit double-edged, just shutting in the bishop. Maybe I can even push d4. Very unclear end game, basically. Uh, but the best move, according uh, to the computer, was a4, which I didn't really consider. And the idea is you, you tie down the rooks. So something like this would happen. And clearly you don't want to go knight b4 because of a5. As Keith Arkell suggested later, you want the pawn on a6 here, really. Because this uh, knight on a uh, pawn on a5 is very weak. And now he starts playing on the king's side, maybe move, move, move like f4. And very nice edge for white, I think. Uh, really would have been suffering here big time. I would have hated this position. You know, it just looks, I mean, I probably would have done something limp like g6, but clearly a bad position. Uh, not good chances of winning the game at all. So fortunately for me, he went king f1. Instead of a4, he went king f1. And uh, yeah, I went, uh, I went d7. So my idea was the sub lines, I might up at knight d4 right so if he goes here maybe i can consider knight d4 and then he's probably going to have to give up sorry uh after king at e2 i can go knight d4 check with an exchange so that is something that he wants to avoid right so he went uh e4 which has yeah i wasn't totally convinced that he should go e4 it wasn't a bad move though i went g5 i felt like at this point i was much happier now i felt like i've got some play um, uh, there was another idea, actually, instead of g5, which is to go a4. I did actually consider a4. It's quite a clever idea. And the idea is if you go, say, for example, you take, I go rook a8. I saw this. Rook is getting active. I'm, I've got quite a good position. 
Uh, but if you went B4, I did calculate 97, but I underestimated how good it was. Now, if he goes here, you go Rook. I think you go Rook C7. And then you go Rook C2, right? So he can't take the pawn, but maybe he can play moves like maybe maybe no, he can't go rook c one, maybe rook d two or something like that. Yeah, rook d two is good, but unclear position. Uh, but didn't go a four. I went g five, and I'll show you how the game continued. Yeah, he went there, which is probably a bad move because that allows me to activate this passive rook. Because the problem is after check, I just go king e seven, and this guy's hanging. So he kind of admitted his mistake, and he went to f1. But now rook here, I was hoping for king e3, terrible blunder, because of rook d4, rook f4, and king d5, winning the game. Uh, but he went f3, only move, good move. I uh, went rook h4. Yeah, and he went here, and I went here, and uh, he should just, I think, practically speaking, I mean, you've got other moves like bishop c3 are okay for white, but I think, practically speaking, I think he should have just come back with a rook, and it's unlikely the black will win this game. I mean, I was considering stuff like takes, and maybe even b5 with the idea of a4. We've got a very tiny pull here, I think, you know, but it's probably not going to be enough to win, right? But round about here, he started making some slightly strange moves. He went rook d2, which I didn't really understand. I went knight e7, so very clear plan to go knight g6. Uh, he went a4. Yeah, that was quite a bad move. He can actually just defend after king e3. I get knight f4, but so what? Um, it's At knight f4, he goes bishop. This is the point he goes bishop a3. He's, he's activated. No, he can't do that. No. No, knight f4, he takes. That's the point, yeah. And then he goes bishop a3. So I can't go there, so what do I do, right? It's not so easy to make progress if I can't go knight f4. But he went rook c2, that was quite a bad move. Knight f4. D5, after d5, I'm winning. <coughs> now, he went king e2, which I thought was as good as anything. But I think by the end at this point. Now, I can't play a long line. Uh, e4. He can go rook c4 as another option. I can't play this line in the game. But I missed an important detail. He goes here. I take rook b2. I saw it up to this and I was like very concerned uh, that it would end up being a draw because of the low maturity. If I take on b2, for example, it's a draw. Because he takes with a bishop. And knight b6 runs into bishop c3. And rook a3 is obviously dropping to b7. That's an immediate draw. It will be a draw for a pawn up. But he's going to be able to hold that. You can even give out the bishop to the pawn. And, and go into... You know, the worst case scenario. You can give out a bishop for the pawn. And go into rook and knight versus rook. Which is a theoretical draw, for example. Uh, but there's an important move here, which is knight f4 check, which I didn't see in my calculations. Or yeah, that's always in the air, and now he's in big trouble because he can't get the king over the queen side. If he goes king d2, I go rook d3 check, and if king f1, uh, say for example something like this, or well, king d1, it will run into rook d3 anyway, and he would have to exchange rooks. Um. Hang on, but that's probably a better way to defend, right? No, hang on, is that wrong? No, no, I take, that's right, I take, and then I go king d5. And you're winning by force, because if he if he attacks my pawn, I, I can just defend it. And now my king will reach c4, the knight will come round and eventually win. I'll eventually win the a4 pawn. It's quite tough to see all this, uh, that he wins by force, right? So I think what I did was like practically quite a good decision. Um, I went knight f4. Yeah, and I just tied him down. The problem is he's in some kind of zigzag now. The bishop's very bad. If he loses the bishop, he drops b3. Can't go rook c1 because that drops b2. So I figured out that he was in big trouble here. He, um, he played king e3. I just, yeah, now I can just torture him by repeating, right, doing the old Russian trick. 
I've seen David Howe do this kind of thing against me. I thought, you know, sometimes you just repeat, you, you, you throw in a check just to see where his king goes, right? Because if he goes to d3, you win immediately with knight b4. So it's worth throwing in a check just in case. If he goes to d2, he might run into rook d2. So he has to keep finding the right square for the king, but still I can make progress. I go rook g8. And I thought his best hope was maybe to go bishop c1, but then activate the bishop. Um, but uh, this is pretty hopeless. I mean, quite possibly this... We'll see... I oh, just rook h8 is actually the best move. Wow. I didn't even consider that move. Rook h8. And if he goes bishop d2 anyway, you come in round up. Now you take. Wow. Oh, just to stop rook g2 because rook g2 does rook h3. Right. Yeah, so it should be winning. But rook b3 is surely also winning, right? Rook b3. Oh, rook b2. Oh, wow. But that's also winning, I think, technically speaking. You can just take. So the game finished something like uh, Rook G8, and now he's in real trouble. Because he's got no moves, he's got no activity, he can never go Rook C1. I could tell by his body language that he kind of resigned to his fate at this point. Uh, I did see a spectacular move here, Rook H1, but I thought that's a really stupid, impractical move to play. In fact, he can take. And then he's got like bishop a3, and he's actually not doing that badly. Uh, he's got ideas of activating the rook and coming across. So that would have been a really bad... I mean, I think the old me would have probably played rook h1, just trying to be flashy. But I'm trying to be more professional. When king f5, that was a good move, just basically slowly improving. His idea is based on the fact I can't... If I take on b2 and go knight d3, he's got king e3 and a rook will defend the rook. I run rook g1 here, and I thought if you play something tricky like this, with the idea of rook b2, king g1, I go here first. And then I take, and then I win the piece. So that's why this knight is such a useful piece uh, in many ways, different ways. Also from like attacking, and also so many combinations. So he's dead lost now. I'm just going to ruthlessly improve the rooks. And nice finish. Uh, if he goes here, I go check. And take, and then there's going to be mate on g4. So we tried this, and very sportingly, Kevin, who by the way once appeared on Countdown, the World of Numbers game. Shout out to Mark Rushton, who uh, couldn't find the moves of this game, the game wasn't live. Um, and uh, he 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 reminded me that Kevin had been on Countdown before. I think I applied for Canada, but didn't get on. Yeah, but that was when Carol Vorneman uh, was uh, was doing the numbers. I think Matthew Turner is another chess player who's been on Countdown. Possibly people like Sam Essen was on. He did the audition with me and got on the show once. Don't mean won that many. I think maybe won one show. Turner was uh, Turner got to the final. Turner was Matthew Turner was really good at Countdown. He got to the final. Uh, the grand final, they lost. So they ended up winning money rather than the uh, the, the, the massive encyclopedia. Um, I'm trying to who else was? Uh, maybe John Emmons was on it. Dave Ledger. There's various chess players have been on Canon over the years. But in this position, uh, after King G3, I went Rook H3. He actually allowed the mate very sportingly, and the game I had. Equally interesting, actually, in round six was against Punnett. I was quite pleased. I actually ended this game for the best game prize. And um, yeah, he played this tricky. I think this F6 is actually quite good, you know. I think the reason it's not more popular, this whole idea of playing f6 against universal systems, it leads to a slightly passive position. Uh, there is a Tarash variation where the white knight was already on e2, therefore can go to g3 in one move. So, slightly improved version for white. I went knight f1. I was expecting to play queen b6, but he went queen c7, which actually was quite a good move, I think. 
and he went bishop d6 and i think around about here i didn't really i couldn't find a good plan i realized his idea is to go bishop d7 bring the rook to e8 break with e5 or maybe he'll just go e5. i think he would just want to go e5 immediately uh, so what's the top move here what's the absolute best move yeah bishop d5 i strongly considered just to try and make some progress but there was something i didn't particularly like but i think it's okay for black now i went bishop c2 which wasn't a terrible move but a little bit suspicious now i went knight g5 which the problem was i had a lot of drink the night before he we went to a really good italian restaurant called la perla and i was drinking a lot uh keith arkle had like a bottle of wine he ordered a bottle of wine i had half a bottle of wine with him i had like a double whiskey and coke I had a beer I just drinking 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 crazy right i should try and give out alcohol it's very hard to give out alcohol i just find when you're in a social setting it's so difficult not to drink uh so i was like kind of on on edge right so i didn't really have the patience to sort of like play a slow build-up game when Nigi five went for the kill, interesting move, not a terrible move. Uh, I've, but I actually can just do this because uh, stuff like this actually doesn't like this. Oh wow, you go queen d three, and then you just go queen g six. Wow, so you shouldn't take that pawn on h two, maybe. So in this initial position, he just goes g six. Yeah, but. But actually, no, it doesn't. Wow, knight h7 is the top move. This is absolutely crazy, right? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even know this that this was a line. It's amazing what the computer finds, it just mauls you. Um, in tactical positions, I mean, you, this is what I thought, you know, I felt like the, the black position was a bit suspicious, uh, because. You know his queen is out on. It really would be better on b6 because then he could take or take it on d4 first because you know then then he would have immediate counterplay on d4. But on c7 is kind of out of the game, right? And now it's saying like here you go queen d2. I mean that is a spectacular idea. I've not seen that kind of idea before. I think this is why you should analyze your games without an engine because you imagine finding this idea without an engine it's much more enjoyable okay it's nice to see this idea the computer points out but you know i think i'm still capable of seeing ideas like this without an engine but of course it's tough um but yeah so actually this whole idea going nice five maybe wasn't such a bad idea right um but he didn't go rookie a i think the other the safer way was actually just to take and now if I go here, he he, he does uh, he does this, and he's fine. In the game, he played a very bad move. He went e5, which actually allows an immediate win. So there's a spectacular win here, which I did not see. I did not consider this next move, which the computer points out as a beautiful win here. Now, the move is knight takes h7. Now, what's the idea behind knight h7? The point is you... Looks completely crazy, right? Well, you're just going to take, and then what are you doing, right? I felt like he was weak in his position with E5. I sensed there was something here, but I couldn't see it. Uh, the point is, you, you take, and then I take on C5, right? Hit the bishop. But what's the bishop going to do? If you take, then you're just dead lost, right? I'm going to just take back. So where's the bishop going to go? Now, if you go here, this is actually winning by force. I think check. And then something like queen d3 is very strong. Yeah, queen d3, knight here, and then just bishop g5, and it's just 1 mil. It's just a terrible position. So you, you've got uh, two points of the piece, but absolutely raging attack. e4. I couldn't even take with a rook, right? Just, just for the laughs. So that was very, very strong. And another line I considered very strongly here, instead of knight h7, was taking and bishop h7 because that was an obvious combination if he takes in the knight i go queen d5 chunk the bishop king h8 yeah bishop f5 and i miscalculated this i thought you could take and uh do this and then knight e4 but it doesn't work in fact i can even take the rook yeah i didn't see this it's very, very poor not to see this and he can pretty much resign. I should calculate. I should be able to calculate this at least. 
So Bishop F5, this is good. Uh, but he can take and go knight 7. The computer says it's not so clear, right? So none of this happened. Um, because I took on e5. And, and then after I took on e5, he should, of course, take with a knight. That's the move I was expecting. I thought it was very unclear, right? Uh, the computer says here, actually, the black is better, if anything. Well, I think it's very messy. I can go knight f5. I was going to go knight f5. That was actually what I was intending. A knight h5 here is now not so good. He goes here. And I'm I'm actually worse. But I was going to go knight f5. And I thought, yeah, it's a game. It's exciting. Uh, but he took with a bishop. That's quite a bad move. And now we're knight h5. And now the attack is very obvious. <coughs> and actually winning. And I missed a, a clearer win in the game. Uh, sorry, uh, he took here first, and then went here. I took. So there's a beautiful win here again. Another thing that computer points out: computer is just so good in these tactical positions, right? It will always find the right idea. An idea I did not find. Um, I briefly looked in the move and very quickly rejected it. Ended up playing a safe continuation, which actually turned out to be winning anyway, because black's position is not good here. Bishop on h2 is kind of stuck. Pawn on h7, very weak. The black king is clearly quite quite weak. Rook h6 can be very easily nullified by knight f7 check. So even a move like bishop e3 immediately, but, but the win is amazing. It's knight f7, rook f7, and then you go here. And go queen e4. And black is dead lost. Uh, you got to defend against the mate. If you play a move like g6. A take. <coughs> Presumably I just play a move like bishop b3 here. It's very strong. No. actually, it's, No. I think bishop b3 is the killer right. Hit the rook. Yeah. I'm starting to come down with something. So that was like the end of the game. That would have been the end. That would have been a very quick win. Instead, uh, I kind of faffed around. He came up with a very amazing counter-attacking idea. Um, he went... Yeah, I was expecting me like 97, which I thought was solid. But he went here. Which I dismissed in my calculations. Now, I saw that I had a safe move like 93 here. But I thought 96 is the move you want to play. It does allow the queen into e h2. Um, he's now got to take. He can't play a bit like here because King G1. He's got to play this Bishop G1 move. If the rook was on F1, it would be immediately at the end of the game. It would be checkmate. Uh, but fortunately, I can run. Sorry, he went uh, Queen H2 check. Yeah, and I'd calculate earlier that if he goes here and Queen H5, I take. Bishop takes. And now not g4, bishop takes f3 uh, with the idea if he takes with a bishop on e6, I take on h6. If he takes with a rook, I take on g4 because he goes rook h2. And I'm not better. So, but instead of that, the problem is I just simply go something like king d2. Or maybe actually simply this is king f1. And then harvest the pawn. And white is uh, basically just technically winning. Uh, because I've got two bishops against... Um, two bishops and a rook. Against rook, knight and bishop. But I've got an extra pawn. So two bishops is already a big advantage. But having the extra pawn is obviously a technical win, right? So that would have been a depressing position to play when you're trying to attack as black. So clearly he didn't want to do that. Um, yeah, I, I looked at me as like bishop f7, that didn't quite work. Uh, knight, knight e5, none of that was really working. So he tried rook h5, which was as good as any. Yeah, and if he checks me and takes the rook, then bishop h6 is winning. Because his queen is too far off. If he does something like this, I just go queen f5, it's the end of the game. Very nice variations. So he tried rook h5. I went uh, queen f3. Probably other ways to win, but queen f3 was good enough. And then he played a move which I hadn't seen at all, and it was really uh, taken back by, which was queen d6. So at this point, I completely lost the plot. 
I wrote two moves down in the same point, so I actually lost the thread on the score sheet when Queen D6. There's more than one way to win here. I did consider the move G4, but I miscalculated it. I was a little bit concerned about opening up this light squares. I thought there's lines where you can maybe get in a bishop B5. I looked at this. I saw this. I thought maybe it's winning, but I was a little bit afraid. Uh, that may, I might have missed something here. Uh, Keith Falkle made the interesting point, actually, that it's not a position you want against a lower-rated player because it's, it's, it's very sharp. It'd be very easy to miss something here in your calculations. I totally agree. So I looked at this and I thought, oh, hang on a minute. This isn't so clear because he's got check. What I'd overlooked was actually the queen covers h1. So you can just simply, I think this is also winning as well, but you can simply go here, check, king e2, and it's the end of the game. So queen is coming h1. I think I miscalculated here, and I thought king e1, he's got queen h1 check, but that obviously it doesn't work, right? So g4 was winning, but I think the move I played in the game was also a very nice, spectacular move, knight c7. Uh, knight, the computer actually says knight g7 also winning, right? I don't, I'm trying to remember why knight g7 was winning. So even maybe knight g5. No, knight g5 is not so good, right? Knight g7 was also... Why was that winning? Oh, because you take and then you just go g4. <laughs> yeah, so knight e5 now we're running to queen b7 with check. So it just says open king and two bishops. But why would you give back a piece like this? It doesn't make much sense. So I went... Knight c7, that's the end of the game, basically. I thought he'd try knight e5. I was going to just take on b7, just crudely take. And I thought I was winning, and it is winning. Uh, but he tried... Um... Yeah, in this position, he tried a desperate try, which was bishop g6. Now, g4 wins, for example, here. If knight e5, then queen b7. Again, there's also back rank problems for black. I went rig d1, that's good enough. He checked. He took. I took. He went knight e5. I went queen. I could go queen b I, I realized queen b7 was winning, but this is also as good. And then bishop f4. And he resigned the game. Uh, sort of bullying him into exchanging more pieces. And I thought that's the simplest way to win. Don't need to win another pawn here. You're already a clean piece up. And you're going to win the game, right? So that was a nice win, actually. I was quite happy about that win. And that kind of gave me the momentum. And actually, the game against Furlow, surprisingly, was 96% accuracy. So, yeah, overall, I'm very pleased about the tournament. Uh, just slightly disappointed I missed out on tiebreak again. Uh, it seems to be a recurring theme. Obviously, the way to avoid that is just to play against the other guys, right? Against Harry and against Keith. Just try to beat them. There's no excuse. I could have tried harder in those games. So I probably got what I deserved in the end uh, for violating the, the goddess Kiasa. But yeah, so that's encouraging. I might well play Scarborough now, uh, which is starting in about a week's time or just under a week. So I might play Scarborough and try. I'm on a bit of a roll now. I've got a bit of momentum going. Um, I've actually finished equal first in my last three tournaments. Same was Keith Arkle. And before that, I won Clee Forbes. I came equal first in Northumbria Masters. So I won five out of my last, I think, eight tournaments. If you count, if you don't count tiebreak and you just count the points, I've finished equal first in about, uh, Five out of my last seven or eight tournaments. I think the only one I didn't win was there was Hull. I didn't finish equal on points. There was Hull and there was Ghent. So, yeah, pleasing signs. I uh, just got to keep it going. Um, you know, I know I can improve. I know I can play better as well. So, the fact I feel like I'm not playing at my best and I'm still getting decent results is, is an encouraging sign. Um... So, yeah, that was the end of Guernsey anyway. So, that was Guernsey finished. And I hope you enjoy the videos from Guernsey. I certainly enjoy playing Guernsey. I would recommend anyone to play Guernsey. The organisers are really lovely people. Uh, they've been doing Guernsey tournament for many years. It's a very nice island. It's a beautiful island. Many places to explore on the island. There's also the surrounding islands you can explore as well by, by boat. 
uh, if you have enough time, probably not enough to, enough time. You play the tournament unless you take a buy or something. Uh, you don't have enough time to explore the other islands, but you could maybe uh come two or three days early and potentially go around the island. Anyway, that's the end of the video.